Good morning, dear friends. We are gathered here to celebrate the seventh Sunday of Easter. In today's Mass, we pray for, for you and for your families. And I request you and ask that you also pray for me as we pray for each other at this time. We also pray for our world. But on this weekend where we celebrate Memorial Day, we remember all those who have paid the ultimate price or have died while serving our country or died from injuries sustained as they served our nation. So we pray for them. We pray that their sacrifices may not be in vain. We pray that their lives shared and given for our country may continue to inspire us as a people to live in ways that honor those sacrifices. So we pray for their families and ask that God may bring them comfort and healing, especially at a time like this where we honor those sacrifices. We continue to pray for those who are sick from this virus around the world, especially here in our country and people we know. Ask for God's intervention and healing. We pray for those who are sick of other ailments, cancers, tumors, heart attacks, and some other deadly kinds of diseases. We ask our Blessed Mother to intercede with and to pray for the healing of these brothers and sisters. We pray for those who are returning to work and are afraid, or returning to church and are scared, or returning to normal life and are troubled. We pray that God may help us make the right and healthy and safe decisions for ourselves and for our future. Pray that God may guide us in everything we do. That His Holy Spirit, the great teacher, may sustain us in these efforts. I invite you to bring all your intentions to God and let us pray together. Our opening hymn will be Alleluia, Sing to Jesus. Jesus Christ, the love of God our Father, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all, and with your spirit. My dear friends, we gather here on this seventh Sunday, one more week before Pentecost. We pray, continue to pray for the gift of the Holy Spirit, that God may grant us grace to prepare like the apostles for that new outpouring of God's gift of his spirit. In this Mass, I'd also like to pray for uh, my younger brother, Augustine, who celebrates his birthday today. And I'll pray for Daniel, who had his wedding yesterday, or his marriage yesterday. I pray for 
all those who have asked our prayers, people who celebrate their weddings or their birthday anniversaries or some other important anniversary in their lives. Pray that God may bless those moments and give you many more opportunities to celebrate. I'd also like to invite you again, if you are just joining us, bring your intentions that we may pray together. To prepare ourselves now for this Mass, let us call to mind our sins and ask God's mercy and forgiveness. You were sent to heal the contrite, Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy. You came to call sinners to repentance, Christ have mercy, Christ have mercy. You plead for us at the right hand of the Father, Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth, people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayers. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High Jesus Christ with the Holy Spirit in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O God, whose Son today ascended to the heavens as the apostles looked on, grant, we pray, that in accordance with the promise we may be worthy to turn, we be worthy of, for him to live with us always on earth, and we with him in heaven who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Our first reading today is a reading from the Acts of the Apostles. After Jesus had been taken up to heaven, the Apostles returned to Jerusalem from the Mount of Olivet, which is near Jerusalem, a Sabbath day's journey away. When they entered the city, they went to the upper room where they were staying. Peter and John and James and Andrew, Philip and Thomas, Bartholomew and Matthew, James, the son of Alphaeus, Simon the Zealot, and Judas, son of James. All these devoted themselves with one accord to prayer, together with some women, and Mary, the mother of Jesus and his brothers. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our response to the psalm is, I believe I shall see the good things of the Lord in the land of the living. I believe I shall see the good things of the Lord in the land of the living. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom should I fear? The Lord is my life's refuge. Of whom should I be afraid? I believe that I shall see the good things of the Lord in the land of the living. One thing I ask of the Lord this I seek, to dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, that I may gaze upon the loveliness of the Lord and contemplate his temple. I believe that I shall see the good things of the Lord in the land of the living. Hear, O Lord, the sound of my call. Have pity on me and answer me. Of you my heart speaks, you my glance six. I believe I shall see the good things of the Lord in the land of the living. 
second reading. Second reading is a reading from the first letter of Saint Peter. Beloved, rejoice to the extent that you share in the sufferings of Christ, so that when his glory is revealed, you may also rejoice exultantly. If you are insulted for the name of Christ, blessed are you, for the spirit of glory and of God rest upon you. But let no one among you be made to suffer as a murderer, a thief, an evildoer, or as an intriguer. But whoever is made to suffer as a Christian should not be ashamed, but glorify God because of the name. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah. 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 I will not leave you orphans, says the Lord. I will come back to you, and your heart will rejoice. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. My sisters and brothers, the Lord be with you and with your spirit. Reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus raised his eyes to heaven and said, Father, the hour has come. Give glory to your Son, so that your Son may glorify you just as you gave him authority over all people so that your son may give eternal life to all you gave him. Now this is eternal life, that they should know you, the only true God, and the one whom you sent, Jesus Christ. I glorified you on earth by accomplishing the work that he gave me to do. Now glorify me. With you, now glorify me, Father, with you, with the glory that I had with you before the world began. I revealed your name to those you gave me out of the world. They belonged to you, and you gave them to me. And they have kept your word. Now they know that everything you gave me is from you, because the words you gave to me. I have given to them, and they have accepted them and truly understood that I came from you, and they have believed that you sent me. I pray for them. I do not pray for the world, but for the ones you have given to me, because they are yours, and everything of mine is yours, and everything of yours is mine and I have been glorified in them. And now I will no longer be in the world, but they are in the world while I am coming to you. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. My dear friends, on this seventh Sunday, May 24th, my hope and my prayer and my belief is that even for you, as anxieties continue to move and flock to it up and down, that you are able to find some courage and some strength to believe that you can handle this 
and you have handled it until now, and you will handle it very well. That God willing, everything will be okay. That we can gather again in our churches, in our temples, in our mosques, and worship God. I believe that. So I pray that God who has brought us this far will keep our feet steady, keep our faith firm, and keep our hopes alive. Today, I will take a moment first to also wish our brothers, our Muslim brothers who are celebrating the Eid. I want to wish every one of them Eid Mubarak. And we pray that as they worship God and celebrate the fruits of their fast, that God may also be with them and bless them. And help them chart a way forward for the good of the world. Today, as I said at the beginning of Mass, we, this weekend, celebrate Memorial Day tomorrow, where we remember all those who have died serving our country. Their, their numbers cannot be, it's impossible to estimate what those numbers are. But they are in several millions of people who have died wearing our uniform and serving our country. We pray for them today. And we salute their courage. We salute their desire to sacrifice. We salute their concern. Not just for our country as some, some hypothetical whole, but our country as individual citizens, you, I, and everyone else. They just didn't sacrifice for some ideal out there. They sacrificed for you and for me. And I believe that the best way to honor those sacrifices is also to sacrifice. Sometimes the best way to give is not to give back to the one who gave you, but is to pass the favor to someone else. They have passed that favor to us. And it behoves us to pass that favor around to others in a simple act of kindness and goodness and mercy and love and compassion. Today, I will say two things. First, we see from the first reading, the concept of prayer seems to, to move around the readings today. In the first reading, we hear how the apostles were gathered after the ascension, Jesus has ascended and told them to wait in Jerusalem until they received the gift that the Father was going to send in his name, the Holy Spirit, the friend, the paraclete, the advocate, the helper, the teacher, the mentor. Call him whatever name that you need. He fits all of that. And so the apostles went back to the upper room. I'm sure this person must have leased this room to them for a period or maybe as long as they wanted. That sacrifice right there. Someone sacrificing his apartment, upper apartment to the apostles, to Christ and to his disciples for a period that they wanted, they needed it. So they go back to the upper room and scripture tells us that the 11 were there with all the other ladies. And among them was our blessed mother. Scripture says that she was there with them through prayer. And they prayed for nine days. They prayed for nine days awaiting the Holy Spirit. Now realize, these were guys who could not pray for one hour before now. They struggled with prayer. They were unable to remember at, at the garden. The Lord asked them, you mean you cannot even pray with me for one hour? So they struggled. At other times they asked Jesus, teach us to pray. So prayer was indeed a struggle for them. And it wasn't, it wasn't something that came natural to them. But this time, I think they got serious. Maybe because Jesus had been taken away from them, they realized now, you know what? 
it's up to us we have to take this ourselves all right everything is now we either do it or we might be lost so they realized because they jesus had, tell, had told them pray often that you fall not into temptation any number of times but these guys were still because the Lord was present there with them. So he could cover up and clean some of the mess. But at this time, he was taken away from them. Suddenly they realized, hey, now it's up to us. We've got to take this seriously. And, and that's my hope too. That we can take our relationship with God seriously. Like the, these guys did. They spent nine days. These were guys who could not spend one hour nine days calculate how many hours in those nine days that's a lot of hours but they were able to stay in prayer night and day breaking for meals and for bathroom breaks and for other things but they spent nine days in prayer until the spirit came down the good news that you must not forget there was one person who was there with them they said the other women they mentioned one person why is that that's because she is essential to our salvation she is important value she is indispensable for our salvation they just said the other women and made sure they mentioned her she is the preeminent apostle before they were apostles she was an apostle already and so she was there and the reason I bring that up is, don't you ever forget to bring her into your home in prayer. Don't you ever forget to invite her to bring your prayers to her son. Don't you ever forget to make sure she is the one leading the church in your honor and for you and your families. Because wherever she did that, wherever she led, her son had no I didn't have a choice, just did what she wanted. So I encourage you, don't forget why the apostles put that in there. Now, in the gospel reading, we hear this is John's gospel, chapter 17. We hear how Jesus, the Lord Jesus, is about preparing to depart to the Father. And all of John's gospel is a prayer. It's a very long prayer. If you get a chance, go read it. It's a long prayer. He sits down or he kneels and he begins to pray for the apostles. In fact, he begins to pray for the church. As you greet Father down, you realize he wasn't just praying for the, the eleven and the disciples. He prayed for you, prayed for me, prayed for everyone. He prayed for us. He modeled for us the value of prayer. That prayer is important. Because in prayer, we don't just make requests to God. We also learn the will of God. Prayer is not us just making some sentences, even though they make sense. That's not prayer. Prayer is more than that. Prayer is you lifting up your heart and making yourself present before God. And Opus Dei would say that prayer is being in conversation with God. That means you sit down with God in conversation. And in that conversation, there is one person who is the boss, not you, not me. It is God. It is God who is the boss. I believe in those nine days, the apostles were in prayer. They didn't tell us one thing they say and one thing they pray for. You know why? I believe in that prayer. They were more like students. They were in quiet contemplation, listening to God speak to their hearts. Tell them his plan and reveal his plan for them. The reason why Jesus could pray for us, you realize he could pray for us in so many words. He's a boss, he's a master. So in prayer, the one who speaks most is the master, not you, not me. The boss speaks more. However, we seem to model our own prayer life in a way that we speak more. In a sense, we tell God what God should do for us. We advise God what God should do for us. 
I grew up and learned that God does not listen to advice. Scripture said it. That no one can advise him. He knows it everything. He knows everything. Before he created you, he knew everything about you and me. Before he made the world, he knew everything. He does not need an accounts law. He does not need an advisor. He doesn't need a guide. God answers prayers. And prayers are not advices. Unfortunately, for most of us, we, we seem to make prayer into an advice or a counseling session to God. We bring God in to let him know how we would want him to model our lives and guide and direct our lives. And we wonder why sometimes God doesn't listen. It's not because he doesn't love you or doesn't care about you. It's because he doesn't care about your advice. You were not there when he formed you in your mother's womb. I was not there when he formed me in my mother's womb. So I go to seek advice in prayer from God. God, tell me, here I am, Lord. I am here to do your will. That means I'm here to listen to how you choose to guide and direct me. My job in prayer is just to make myself, to say present, here I am, Lord. And spend less time talking. And spend more time listening in prayer. In that conversation, you'll be amazed and surprised. Look, even psychology, when I mean psychology, I mean the science of psychology. It's an agreement today of the value and the benefits of meditative prayer. Where you quietly calm down and just allow everything to come into your soul and into your spirit. And, and there are other religions that are benefiting from this or other forms of life that are benefiting from this wonderful skill, a wonderful gift. And so that's the first thing I want you to think about. That prayer is not you coming to advise God. If that's how you pray, quit that prayer. And make prayer. You listening to God, you being the disciple, come to prayer. Yeah, spend, if you're going to spend 20 minutes, take 5 minutes. And just let God know that you are here and that you worship him and that you adore him and that you say whatever you want to say and spend more time and just listen to him. But if you are going to speak for 20 minutes, then make sure that you're going to be there for about one hour because he would have a lot to also say. You know as I do, we were raised to pray where you lead the prayer and you finish everything and the moment you finish, thanks be to God and you're gone. We don't listen. Now, you see how the Mass is ordered. The Mass is ordered in such a way that we listen to God's Word. I think if you check, the liturgy of the Word is the biggest part of the Mass. Where we are listening. Not when we are talking. Yeah, if the priest is talking, he is speaking in the name of God. That's why. So in a sense, God is speaking to us. So the liturgy of the Word is the biggest block in the entire Mass. There's a reason for that. Because that's when God addresses our needs or speaks to our souls and to our hearts and to our minds. That's prayer. Where they said the Mass is the most important prayer. Because yes, God is the one who not only gives us his word, in, he also gives us himself in the sacrament. We do less. He does more. So that's the first thing I want us to think about. In your prayer, remember where you stand. Who you are. You are a disciple. There to listen to God. Speak to your heart. Not there to advise God. So as we pray for the, the, the Holy Spirit. Spend more time. Listening. And do less talking. The second thing I want to say about prayer. Why sometimes prayer is so difficult for a lot for many of us. Is because we think prayer is a tax. So I bring this book. It's a prayer book. I feel I have to begin from the first page and say everything to the last page. Yes, there are times when we do that and it makes us feel good. But it doesn't give us no reward. Why is that? Because we, we are relating to prayer as though it was a duty. So once I've done my duty, I feel relieved. I feel I'm done. I feel I'm good. It makes me feel awesome. I don't know. If 
That is prayer. That for me is preparation for prayer. It's preparation for prayer. When we do all of that, that's when we are preparing for prayer. Because the real prayer is when we listen. Prayer is not a duty. You don't need one hour every time to, to be able to pray to God. You don't need 30 minutes every time to be able to pray to God. You don't need nine days every time to be able to pray to God. You can make a phone call and listen to, your, to the other person speak to you in five minutes. That means you can establish that connection with God in five minutes depending on what time you have. Most of us may, you know, I don't have time to pray. If you have five minutes, that's enough time to pray. If you have 10 minutes, that's enough time to pray. If you have 20 minutes, that's enough time to pray. If you have 40 minutes, that's enough time to pray. But if you have one hour, that's enough time to pray. And I'm sure in the entire day, we, have, we can make those blocks of 10 minutes or 5 minutes or 20 minutes. So that means... There is no excuse not to be in communication with God, not to listen to God, guide the next hour of my life. Listen to God, guide the next quarter of my day. Listen to God, guide the next half of my day. Listen to God, guide the last hour of my day. You and I can do that. And so I encourage you, let us learn to keep God close to us. Or rather, let us learn, learn to keep close to God, to stay close to God. It helps us. It calms our anxieties. It gives us guidance and direction and, and models for us how to behave in, in every, every, every moment. I don't know how much time I have, but let me quickly say this. When you read the second reading, this is what the Apostle Peter says. If you are insulted in the name of Christ, blessed are you. If you are insulted in the name of Christ, blessed are you. For the spirit of, the spirit of glory and of God rests upon you. But let no one among you be made to suffer as a murderer, a thief, an evildoer, or an intriguer. I'd like just to focus very, very briefly on those words. Because I have heard so many people claim that they are persecuted and it makes them feel like they are doing something for God because you suddenly appropriate to yourself the title of a martyr and you project to someone who is persecuting you I, I don't know if that's true because too often we put ourselves in situations where people react to us in ways that are hostile and then we blame them for being hostile even though our behavior would trigger hostility to us yes there are others who will be hostile to us no matter what but don't be the provocateur don't provoke people and then blame them when they react don't do that. That's exactly what Apostle is talking about here. You don't treat people badly or give them, you know, some silent treatment or call them names or treat their bad behavior around them. And then when they act, you say you're being persecuted. I'm being persecuted. Are we being persecuted as Christians? Absolutely. But are we also making it up sometimes? Yes, I do believe that. And so that's what the apostle is saying to us here. Don't provoke people to anger and claim that you are being persecuted. Don't do that. We must not do that. Jesus did not do that. And the apostle tells us not to do that. That means, show. Sure, the Bible tells us that the fruits of the Holy Spirit are love are peace, faithfulness, joy, goodness, gentleness, patience, self-control, and kindness. Then tell us of provocation, you know, or disrespect, or it did not tell us of all of that. So, so we pray, dear friends, that we would learn to live based on the fruits 
that the Holy Spirit um, in, invites or rather triggers in us. It's only then that we are truly disciples of Christ. So always I like to end my reflections by reminding you that you are the delight of the Almighty God and that God loves you very much. And I hope that you are keeping your devotion to the Holy Spirit for Pentecost. God loves you. Let us pray. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in the one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from, the, from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the, Holy, of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in the one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Most merciful God, we pray to it. We pray for our Pope. We pray for our bishops. pray for our priests. pray especially for all those who have been sickened or may have died from this virus, oh God. I know that when all of this is over, some churches may never come back again because there will be no pastors for those churches. We pray to dear God that you may inspire young men and young women to answer the call to the priesthood and the religious life. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray, dear God, for your people all around the world. Pray especially for those whose condition is very dire. Those who are homeless, our seniors, those who live alone, those who are sick, those in critical care, children with physical or mental disabilities, and their parents. Pray for those who are hungry and are barely able to get by the next day. Pray, dear God, that you may inspire people around them to come to their aid. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. As a church gathered in prayer for Pentecost, we pray, dear God, that you may take away from us any stumbling block, that you may take away from us anything that might prevent us to participate in this new anointing of your spirit, that when Pentecost dawns upon us, we may receive help from you. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray, Almighty God, for those who are battling this disease, our nurses, our doctors, our researchers, those who provide our equipment. We ask, Almighty God, that you may be with them, that you may protect them, that you may help provide inspiration and guidance as they seek an end to this virus. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for those who have sacrificed their lives saving our country. We ask you, O oh God, that you may bless their sacrifices by granting them rest in your presence, that you may watch over and comfort their families and help us to never forget those sacrifices. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us ask our Blessed Mother to intercede for us as we say, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed are thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, Pray for us sinners, now and the hour of our death. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made to become our bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed I Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this wine to offer, 
fruits of the vine and work of human hands become our spiritual fruit. Blessed be God. Pray, my beloved sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours be acceptable to God, Almighty Father. May the God accept the sacrifice at my hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of his holy church. Accept, O God, the prayer of your faithful with the sacrificial offerings, that through this act of devotedness, we may pass over to the glory of heaven, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly totally right and just. Our duty and our salvation. Always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. Through Christ our Lord. For after his resurrection. He plainly appeared to all his disciples. And was taken up to heaven in their sight that he might make us share us in his divinity. Therefore, overcome with Pascal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic host sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they are playing. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna. In the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, this gift we pray by sending down your spirit upon them like the dew fall, that they may become for us the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, the Lord took bread, and giving thanks. He broke it, gave it to the disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, the Lord took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to the disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of a new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. With the first acclamation, let us proclaim the mystery of our faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and this chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one, by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis our Pope and Timothy our Bishop and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all we pray that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have placed you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co heirs with eternal life. We may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Let us rise and pray in the words our Lord gave us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, 
and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil deliver us lord we pray from every evil graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our savior jesus christ for the kingdom the power and the glory are yours now and forever lord jesus christ who said to your apostles peace i leave you my peace i give you look not on our sins but on the faith of your church and graciously grant all peace and unity in accordance with your will who we'll live and reign forever and ever amen the peace of the lord jesus be with you always and with your spirit my dear friends from me to you and your families may peace be with you may peace rest with you and may god's peace abide with you forever amen lamb of god you take away the sins of the world have mercy on us lamb of god you take away the sins of the world have mercy on us lamb of god you take away the sins of the world grant us peace Look up, my sisters and brothers, and behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be filled. In this moment of spiritual communion, let us ask our blessed God to bring us his body and his sacrament. Gracious God, as we behold your body and your blood elevated for our viewing we beg you dear god that deep in our souls and in our hearts and in our spirits we may feel the effect of this sacrament and as we prepare to be blessed by your spirit at pentecost we ask oh god that this sacrament will prepare us and keep us dedicated and open to the holy anointing amen Let us pray. Hear us, O God, our Savior, and grant us confidence that through the secret mysteries there will be accompanied in the body of your holy church what has already come to pass in Christ, our head, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Before the final blessing, I would like to take a moment to express my thanks to all of you and to ask that you continue to pray pray for people in your life but also pray for me and pray for all those uh, priests especially those who are sick right now there are some with this coronavirus we pray that god may protect them and that god may help them find healing or um, i know this is um, a very tempting weekend if you have to go out please Make sure that you protect yourself by keeping a good distance from others and protect others by wearing your mask. Those two things will protect you and also protect others. So I beg you, that, that's the right thing to do. It is a godly thing to do. It is a Christian thing to do. It is a God-fearing thing to do. So please, do it. Do it for yourself. Do it for people who care for you and care about you but also do it for others who may not even care about you, but do it because you care about them. 
that you're different. Let us say, say the prayer to St. Michael the Archangel. St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the snares, against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits that prowl throughout the world, seeking the ruins of souls. Amen. Let us pray. Most merciful God, watch over your children and bless them. Be their grace, be their source of strength, be their source of encouragement, and hold them by the hand where they are unable any longer. This favors we ask, O oh God, and we ask through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Almighty God bless and keep you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Dear friends, this Mass is ended. We go forth in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Because we are celebrating Memorial Day, I'd like for us to sing America the Beautiful. Oh, beautiful for spacious skies, oh, amber waves of green, for purple mountain majesties, Above the fruit set plain, America, America, God shed His grace on thee and crown thy good with brotherhood from sea to shining sea. See